Today my guest is Raj Krishnan. Raj, how are you? Doing very well, David. Uh, thanks for being on my show. Thank you. Thank tell, you for tell asking me. Tell uh, me, what do you do? I am the data solution architect. So you must have heard about these new roles, uh, focusing quite a bit on data because uh, I don't know if you heard Satya, uh, the keynote, mm -hmm. Satya said that's the revolution that it's going to happen. It's all about the data. It's all about the data. And then a lot of our investment is in that area. Mm -hmm. So you might have noticed that Microsoft has been hiring a lot of people in the data uh, area, in, including the data science, mm -hmm. data orchestration, data management. So I'm a DSA for SMSNP in the central region. That's a lot of initials. So that's a data science architect? Is it's that right? a data solution architect. Data solution so architect yeah, in the medium, uh, yeah, SMS, SMSNP. small and medium sized partners, I think, yeah. for this? I'm still learning all the acronyms uh, myself. That's fine. <laughs> and it's not just Microsoft, actually. Data science is becoming huge in the industry uh, it is. all over. Yeah. Um, and uh, But Microsoft has Azure. Yes. And Azure is uh, a lot of data. This Azure is so big, it's expanding all the time, and it's ideal, I think, for big data solutions. Yeah, I mean, one of the challenges that I'm seeing is that you know people are talking about predictive analytic, machine learning, but the bigger challenge is I have data all over the place. How do I get the data in order mm -hmm. to be able to do these kinds of things? Yeah. Right, so that's where I think it's not only about using a machine learning and data science, but taking data and making it easily consumable, Yes. and then kind of getting it all in a kind of centralized place so that you can get the data when you want it, where you want it. Right, and you gave a talk um, yesterday, I think. I did on Monday, uh, uh, Monday. at 3.15, uh, uh -huh. I had a presentation. What uh, was your topic? My topic, actually, the topic doesn't say it all, it says putting the billing API to work. Okay, billing API of Azure. Yes, um, so the problem that I was trying to address is that, um, the Azure, one of the biggest things when you're consuming is that people, once it's on the cloud, they feel like they have no control over things. Right? Hmm. How much am I spending? When am I spending? How, would, what, how much will I be spending? So um, obtaining data related to usage is one of the critical uh, uh, need for our customers. Okay. We haven't been very good in exposing that. You know, We had some tools here and there, yeah. but what Microsoft has been doing is that coming up with an API hmm. that gives you the usage data and also it gives you the rate card. You know how much each of those, um, what we call meters, the right. resources cost. Sure. By pulling both of those, then it says, "Hey, do whatever you want to do with it." Right. So I, my I, I experience is a little bit because I get with MSD and I got one hundred fifty dollars a month. Yeah. And I almost always go over that. And I try to I try to manage that, but sometimes it's not obvious to me where that money is going. And and then sometimes you get stuck saying that you're trying to do a demo. Uh -huh. Just then it's over, right? Because you don't have the resources. Oh, well, so, I have it set up to just charge my credit card when it goes it, over, it, it, but I end, yeah. up, I end up paying for that. You're a dedicated guy. <laughs> a lot of people just stop doing their work. Yeah, it's true. You know, you end up spending your own money to yeah. do. I don't want to just go home on the 19th of the month <laughs> if I, my, my usage runs out. Yeah. I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> Call me on the first. <laughs> see, see, these are scenarios. Imagine just if uh, at least five days before, when it's hitting the limit, you get an alert notification saying that, hey, you're consuming at a rate where in another yep. two to three days you're going to be. Right. We do that now in, yep. in a way, but what if we had a historical uh, data of all the usage and okay. what's been, how can we how can we get that in the right. first place? Right. So clearly that data exists because yes. Microsoft is using that to charge us. Yes. Yes. Um, but uh, and it's available through. Well, can we query that data? Can we query it directly? So so that's the so my talk was about okay now actually we're continuing to refine that API. Okay. So we have two APIs important APIs that are available. One of them gives you the usage. So it, it gives you the usage by resources, the region, meter ID, category, project. And then uh, you may be aware now we are able to add tags to resource groups. So because if you want to kind of even have a, a granular, uh, you know, slicing of the data, you can add mm. your own tag to the resource. Okay. So it's all there. So mm. that's the usage data. Mm. And then the next thing is, okay, for each of those meters, Microsoft charges you, and even that varies depending upon what we call offer code, right? Each pe person may have a different offer code depending on your the volume uh, oh, discount. Yeah, so MSDN gets charged uh, one rate. Different, rate. One rate. Yeah. Okay. So it, now you have these two. Mm. But we, we as, as Microsoft, we never build solutions. We just say, okay, here it is, now. 
<laughs> not never, we'll but it's often that's the case. Yeah, we give yeah, you the we tools to build never. your own solution. But, uh, because what, the thing is, if you build a solution, first of all, we have to maintain that solution. Yeah. Secondly, you know, it's not only just the data, that how you want to use the data, the scenarios are too much for us to kind of build a product out of that. Um, yeah. I think that that would be another reason for not kind of offering a full-blown end-to-end solution. Yeah, which might not be appropriate for everybody. Everybody, yes. All right, so how, how do I, if I want to analyze my billing, okay. uh, how do I go about doing this? So the one that I talked about in my presentation was that, okay, first thing is, uh, there are some sample quotes that are available in GitHub that okay. shows you how to get the data, and it stops there. Hmm. So uh, what I did was, I wanted to orchestrate this. So let's say, you know, I'm interested in weekly usage data. So what if I can set up a orchestration that says every week go pull this, put it in a storage, and then take it, put it in a data warehouse. Hmm. And then I can either do Power BI connecting to the data warehouse or I can use machine learning to analyze the data. Hmm. So right now, all I can do is get the data at a certain period using that uh, API. But I don't have a persistent store. I see. Nor do I have a mechanism to orchestrate that from end to end. Hmm. So my talk was building a end-to-end -end solution using okay. Azure Data Factory and SQL Data Warehouse, hmm. uh, and then get it at a periodic thing uh, and do copy the data from a, uh, fr like first uh, pull the data. So you're calling this API, is that just a web job, a scheduled web job? That's okay, so that? that's a good thing. So one of the options that we're looking at is it could be either a logic app or a web app. So mm -hmm. the first part of the thing is where we a web job or something, because mm -hmm. first and foremost thing is I need to periodically call this API to get the data. Right. right? That can be done either using web jobs mm -hmm. or a logic app, yeah. or even my Azure Data Factory can directly call uh, oh. the, you know, there are so many options. Okay. So that let's say that part, you, you can do something. But once you get the data, then what I, first thing I do is I put it in a blob storage. Okay. And then the Data Factory goes, looks at the folder, 2015, January, 2016, January. Let me get this, and then let me dump it into Data Warehouse. Hmm, okay. And so do this, let's say if I'm only interested on a monthly basis, then I run it every month, oh. and I put the frequency as month in the Data Factory, it automatically goes, looks for a folder, if there's a data, it runs the job. Hmm. So then the whole thing is automated. All right, and then you want to do some kind of analysis on that data. Exactly. So even though I did not uh, do the whole thing, the only thing I did was I showed how you can consume it in Power BI. Okay. As much as Power BI is cool, but that's not the end goal of this thing. You know, we want to be able to do more with it. Mm -hmm. Right, Power BI, I can now directly do Power BI by calling this web uh, URL as a, as a source and then mm -hmm. consume it. But then all I'm doing is, like, I look at data visualization as a postmortem what has happened, right? okay. but we want to do a lot more with it. So having this persistent store in data warehouse, there are many scenarios we can look at. A scenario would be to be able to create alerts based on a usage pattern. Hmm. Another scenario would be, what if scenario? You know what, Eastern region, the certain things are a little cheaper, or hmm. certain features are not available. Right. So I take this, what happened if I did a simulation of this thing by changing the regions, what hmm. would be usage? That's oh. another scenario. Oh, and you use Power BI to do that? No, no. for that you will do Azure ML. Azure ML, oh, I okay. see, okay. So we can do... To person uh, predictive analysis. Yeah, predictive analysis. And another thing we can do is, um, uh, like, do exponential, exponential smoothening to do a forecast. Hmm. Okay. And what if scenario. So we can now truly use machine learning to look at the historical data to do a lot of predictions and uh, what if scenarios. Oh, I like this solution. I mean, first of all, I like it because it's, uh, it uh, makes the billing data accessible, which yes. I like because I'm a cheapskate. Yeah. Uh, but also, uh, that same scenario could be used for just about any piece of data. Exactly. That's that paradigm. So that was the message that I uh, had at the end of the thing was that, yeah, I know I did this for billing API, but imagine our biggest challenge these days is getting data. Imagine that we can orchestrate this whole thing through uh, calling a web API, calling yep. a, a file storage, yeah. calling a, a Oracle, mm -hmm. but then use Data Factory to orchestrate this, put it in a persistent store. And that persistent store doesn't have to be SQL Data Warehouse. Mm -hmm. It can be Hadoop, it can be Hive, it can be anywhere. Right. And then finally, visualization and analysis using Azure ML. So this is kind of a pattern yeah. that can be is widely applicable to many scenarios. Yeah, it's a, it's a pattern that we can apply uh, after we build our application. It's an add-on that can add value to something that we've already built. We, captured, we spend so much time capturing all this data. Exactly. Uh, and we don't spend nearly as much time historically analyzing that data we've captured. 
There's yeah. a lot of value in that. Yeah, I, I think that's where the future is. That's where the need is. It's uh, people now have come up with really sophisticated algorithms. You know, look at uh, R, look at Revolution Analytics, look at Azure ML. You know what? But in order to do this, you got to get the data there. Right. That's where a lot of people are, have, uh, are having a lot of challenges. First of all, you have to clean the data, you have to process the data, and you have to have a central repository for the data. Mm -hmm. I think that's where things like Azure Data Factory uh, and uh, Logic Apps and things like this could help us to get there. Absolutely. Is there anywhere somebody could go to uh, learn more about this? Yes. So, if you're particularly interested in um, uh, Azure um, Billing API, there is a GitHub repository. So, if okay. you just do a search for Billing API GitHub, it'll take you right there. Okay, we can put that in the show notes. So, that's, that gives you the thing. And I'm going to put my code in that GitHub repository. Okay. I've been working with the product group ah. uh, who did that, so they're really interested in uh, seeing this as well. Um, and yeah, so th th that'll be, and then you learn a little bit about Azure Data Factory. There are a lot of very good tutorials. Hmm. Uh, uh, you know, the creativity comes in, okay, here's the data, here's the API, now how do I automate this? How do I orchestrate this? Right. And the tool is, it's my choice of tool. It could be any tool. Maybe right. you do SSIS, I don't know. Right. It, it, I, that's irrelevant. But mm -hmm. I think I see a lot of potential in the Azure Data Factory because some of the automations and some of the declarative way, and even better, what was amazing with Azure Data Factory was, it, is, it seems to me it was built for developers. When things don't work, the, the, the error messages are so good, hmm. which is a very rare thing when we have a product. <laughs> Sadly, uh, that's true. Uh, <laughs> but here it says, oh, you know what, there was no file in the folder. I, I've uh. never seen a dev guy give that kind of a sta <laughs> <laughs> error statement. So yeah. I think uh, so that's why Object, like, instance, not since Something, even an ID object. and with a GUI that's about <laughs> this long. So uh, I think uh, that's why I like Azure Data Factory. Excellent, do you have an online presence? An online presence. Do you have a blog or a See, social so media? Content? I feel very guilty about that okay. because <laughs> I always consume other people's <laughs> assets and I've not been. You have uh, a lot to share. I do, I do. <laughs> but uh, it, it looks like there's so many people are doing so many great things, I'm constantly consuming <laughs> it, but I think I should find the time to. All right, well, we'll point it to your contributing to this other GitHub repository. We'll point yes. people to that. All right. Raj, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, David, I just want to thank you for the opportunity. You know, uh, I'm just, I just want to highlight some of the things that you do. One of the things you did for your friends, like, like Bill, highlighting what he did was, I think was quite impressive, and I want to thank you for that. I think it kind of, your show title, Technology and Friends, kind of reflects the kind of things that you do, and I'm happy to be part of this.